One of the questions that our students ask us is, what topic should I focus on if I'm preparing for a data analyst role? Because if you look at our Applied AI course, we cover it for a wide spectrum of roles from data analyst roles to cutting edge machine learning engineer or machine learning scientist roles at some of the top product based companies. So some students ask us, okay, what, what amongst these topics are most important that I should prepare if I'm applying for a data analyst role? It's a very valid question. Please understand that the data analyst role itself has huge variance in terms of expectations across various companies and teams, right? A top product based company might expect data analysts to be very good with Python programming. Right. Well, other companies might just say, if you're good, with, if you're good with SQL, we are good with it. You don't have to be very good at programming in Python. And again, it also depends within the same company, different teams might have different requirements. Right. So there is a lot of variability or variance across what is expected of a data analyst across various companies and within the same company across various teams. But there are a lot of common skills and expertise that is expected from a data analyst role. So I'll focus on the most popular and most asked skills across a wide spectrum of companies. Now, there might be some experienced folks amongst you. For experienced folks who either have relevant data analyst experience or other software engineering or any other experience, right? The expectation from an experienced candidate is the same skills and expertise, but with more mathematical and more rigor and also more depth of understanding. Right? That those are the two things that are expected out of experienced candidates. Of course, if they can solve real world problems better than freshers, that's also highly beneficial. And they're expected to solve experience, experienced candidates are expected to solve more complex real world problems than a fresher or somebody with few years of experience. Okay, so the most important skill that is often asked across many, many companies is ability to program in any major programming language, Python being a very favorite programming language. Right? Because a lot of data science, machine learning, data analysis is today done in Python. Right? So along with Python, you should also be comfortable with inbuilt data structures like a dictionary, like a set, like a list. These are You don't have to be an expert at data structures, but you at least have to be comfortable with using the inbuilt data structures in Python and being able to apply them to real world simple Python programming. Right? You're also expected to know the basics of space and time complexity. Again, space and time complexity is something that is typically focused in product based companies, not so much in other types of companies, right? Again, some companies might just say, I don't care if you know Python programming or not, as long as you know SQL, you're cool. So, but a vast majority of companies that we see do ask for Python skills, right? The next very, very popular skill, which is almost like a must have, it's an extremely high focus area for a data analyst role is ability to write SQL SQL statements to fetch data. And why is this important? Think about it. A data analyst, typically there is a huge reservoir of data, right? And this data could be in a relational database, in a NoSQL database, in a big data system, doesn't matter where it is. Their job is to fetch this data using SQL or SQL-like languages, right? Or, or languages which are inspired from SQL or which are very similar to SQL and then perform some analysis on top of them. Right, so SQL is super duper important. If you're applying for a data analyst role, you should expect one or more rounds of interviews which are purely SQL focused. Within SQL itself, lots of questions that you would be asked is of course the basic operations that are there in SQL, etc. But a very important topic that you have to be comfortable with is the order of execution of operators. Right, this is where a lot of people mess up in SQL interviews. So please be very comfortable understanding which operator runs after which operator when you have a slightly lengthy and complex SQL query. And you have to be very comfortable with nested SQL queries. Again, nested SQL queries is something that you can expect from any product based company. Very often you will expect you can expect questions around nested SQL queries, right? So again, joins, all of that stuff is important, but we see a lot of people making mistakes in the order of execution of SQL queries and nested queries. But of course, you have to be very, very comfortable with SQL itself, right? The third thing is you have to be comfortable with few libraries. Of course, more libraries, you know, the better it is. But I'm just listing down the most important libraries uh, that, that somebody who is writing in Python should be comfortable with. 
You should be comfortable with matplotlib for plotting because this is the most widely used library for plotting in Python for data science applications. Again, you have to be very comfortable with pandas because pandas is again one of the most popular libraries that are used for data processing. You have to be comfortable with numpy and scipy. Again, you don't have to be an expert at any of them, but you have to know the basic functionality and you should be able to read up a reference and understand what these what these libraries can provide us. NumPy and SciPy are very important from a numerical computation standpoint. Okay, these three libraries, these three, four libraries, if you're comfortable with, you have most of the important stuff covered. Of course, if you know something like Seaborn for plotting, that's always advantageous, but many companies might say, at least do you know these basic stuff? Again, libraries come and go, right? You always learn new libraries and you forget libraries that you don't use regularly. So it's perfectly okay as long as you know a few of them. Next thing is data visualization. This is extremely important for a data analyst because the data analyst's job, if you think about it, is to take data, make sense out of it and explain it very clearly to others. That's their fundamental job, right? So you should be comfortable with various types of plotting techniques that you have at your disposal. Very importantly, you should know when to use which plot and by looking at which plot can you conclude what. At the end of the day, if you just draw plots, it's useless. You have to draw plots and come to a valuable conclusion at the end of it. Visualization is not an end into itself. It is a it is just an intermediate step in coming to good conclusions. So you have to know when to use which plot and what can you conclude from each of the plots. Again, sometimes you might have to visualize high dimensional data. So knowing techniques like TSNE or uh, dimensional reduction techniques like PCA, is very very helpful for most data analyst roles people expect you to know at least pca if not tsne if you know tsne also that's extra brownie points for you again for all these techniques you should be comfortable with the underlying mathematics the intuition behind the the intuitive feel of the plot the intuitive understanding of something like pca or tsne or even simple histograms pdf cdf all of that stuff right and you should be able to write code for each of them Math, intuition and code, all three of them are important, right? So the next thing is, of course, a typical data analyst will also, after he pulls the data, they have to pre-process the data. Again, there are some standard techniques like cleaning data, imputing data, deduping, being able to compute basic featureization. You don't have to be an expert at advanced featureization techniques, but you should be able to featureize and apply common sense to tabular data. And you have to know basic featureization of text. You don't have to know very advanced cutting edge stuff, but you have to know basic featureizations like bag of words, TFIDF type of stuff. Of course, data pre-processing is very context specific and problem specific. What I've listed here are some of the basic techniques, right? But depending on the problem at hand, you might have to apply slightly different techniques, but nobody is expecting you to be an expert at it. You have to know the basic techniques, the foundational techniques, right? Because the whole the whole area of data pre-processing itself is vast, depending on the application that you're using it for. Okay, next is, this is extremely important that you need to have strong foundational mathematics. You have to know the basics of linear algebra. What is a plane, equation of a plane, distance of a plane to a point, because linear algebra is foundational for all of analysis. And the most important topic within foundational, foundational mathematics is probability and statistics, because this is what is most extensively used by data analysts to arrive at conclusions via top via things like hypothesis testing or ab tests right again the basic concepts of bayes theorem all of them are important everything in probability and statistics is extremely critical right again if i have to pick one topic for a data analyst i would say good knowledge of basic probability and statistic te statistics techniques is the most important along with sql again it's also very important that you know the basics of optimization. You don't have to be an expert knowing cutting edge optimization techniques, but you should at least know what is gradient descent and what is stochastic gradient descent. This is good enough. And what is mini batch SGD, batch SGD, the simple concepts, right? You don't have to know very cutting edge advanced techniques and deep learning based optimization methods, but simple methods is good enough. Now, of course, a data analyst also should know the basic machine learning techniques. For example, in supervised learning, they should know the basics of how to use logistic regression. They should do the math, intuition, and code for logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, and decision trees. 
Again, I've not listed all the techniques. For example, if a data analyst doesn't know support vector machines, that's okay very often. If you know it, that's always advantageous to you. But by knowing what I mean is, you know all of the underlying mathematics, you have a good intuition of what's happening, and you also can write code for it and implement code for it. Again, I've also skipped some advanced ensemble methods. If you know them, that's great. But even if you don't know it, if you're strong in other topics, that will be sufficient. Again, feature importance, especially in classification based techniques and regression based techniques is very, very important because feature importance is often used by data analysts to arrive at very important conclusions. Similarly, in regression, if you know basics of linear regression and also regression using decision trees, I think you have your, uh, you have your topics covered. In clustering, again, you don't have to know advanced matrix factorization based clustering and all of that. But you need to know the basics of k-means and you have to know the basics of hierarchical clustering. Again, if you, if you notice, you are basically having some idea of the simplest of techniques in classification, regression and clustering. That's what this whole, this whole uh, set of techniques are all about. But amongst the techniques that you know, you are expected to know the mathematics, intuition and code, all three of them. Now, some, some companies could also ask for knowledge of Hadoop, Spark or other big data techniques. Again, sometimes it is listed as optional, sometimes it's listed as mandatory. But don't worry about it even if you don't know it. Again, the most important thing here is if you're using, let's say, Hadoop, right? You mostly will access data using Hive or sometimes even a language called as Pig. Now, Hive has something called as Hive query language, which is if you look at the documentation of it, if you know SQL, you can pick up Hive query language in one or two days because it is 95 plus percent or mostly SQL with some minor changes which are very specific to Hadoop. Similarly, if you are using Spark or for that matter, any big data system in, within Spark, there is something called Spark SQL, which is 95 plus percent, mostly SQL with a few more operators, right? So that's why most companies ask you to be very good in SQL, because if you know the basics of SQL, you can fetch data and even do some simple computations on Hadoop, Spark or any other big data platform by just learning these specialized query languages which are 95 plus percent mostly basic SQL with a few minor edits and changes, right? Again, this is sometimes asked as optional. Again, whenever somebody writes a job description, they'll try to write everything they can think of. You don't have to be able to tick everything that's there in a job description. If you have the foundational skills and for example, imagine if you don't know how to per Spark, but you're very good in SQL, most companies will hire you because they also realize that you can pick up HiveQL or Spark SQL in no time if you have strong SQL foundations. Some companies could also focus on tools. For example, there are data analysis tools like Tableau, even Microsoft Excel for that matter, or things like Quillic View or Power BI from Microsoft, etc. Again, please understand that most of them are GUI tools and they're very similar to using Microsoft Word, Excel or PowerPoint. Right. So if you know them well and nice, if you don't know them, it is not something that is extremely critical, right? Because most of these have SQL, like you can write SQL, your own SQL queries if you want to fetch data. Let's take Tableau as an example, right? Tableau simplifies data fetching without having to write SQL queries. But if you already know SQL and if you already know how to build your own plotting tools, Right. Again, what Tableau tries to do is Tableau tries to make it easier for people, people who may not know uh, programming and plotting and people who may not know SQL to be able to do it without the knowledge of these. But you already have foundational knowledge. You already know SQL and you already know plotting in Python or any other major programming language. So given this foundational knowledge, picking up something like Tableau is extremely simple and recruiters understand that. Right. For example, if you look at top product based companies, very often, if you have very strong uh, uh, knowledge of plotting techniques and ability to write code for plotting and SQL. And if you don't know Tableau, even though the job description has Tableau, they might say, OK, this guy knows the foundations. He can pick up Tableau in just a couple of days. I've had people in my team who have picked up Tableau in, in a weekend because their foundational knowledge of SQL and plotting are very, very strong. Right. So these are often called as good to have skills. They're not foundational for a data analyst role because these tools come and go just like any other tool, just like a library in Python. 
these tools come and go. Some of them are very powerful, very widely used, right? And so companies also could change the tools. One team in a company could use Tableau, other team in the company could use Power BI, etc. Right? So if you have foundational skills and if you don't know these tools, it's perfectly okay. Just clearly communicate it with the recruiter, with the hiring managers and just tell them that I can do whatever Tableau, Quilliqui or Power BI does in Python and SQL. Right? Just be very clear about that communication. But if you know these tools, again, these tools are extremely easy to pick up. They're as easy as using Microsoft Word, Excel or PowerPoint if you have the foundational knowledge of SQL and plotting techniques. Right? So very importantly, you need to have a strong portfolio to showcase your work. Right? So try to build one portfolio wherein you're doing data visualization. And at the, for, remember, data visualization where you're just drawing some plots is useless. Under every plot, just come up with a crisp conclusion on what you have concluded from that plot. And you can build very interactive web apps for this. Again, if you just know Python programming, there are some very nice tools like Streamlit, which helps you build web apps just using Python without any knowledge of web technologies. Right, so try to build a cool data visualization, uh, data visualization web app with very neat conclusions. Actually, some of our students have done this even on COVID-19 data and it looks very good. It looks very professional and with very clear conclusions. Just plots alone is not sufficient. Please list clear conclusions that you have analyzed and concluded at the end of all the analysis. Similarly, try to write one blog and put your code on GitHub for some analysis that you have done on a real world problem wherein you are using techniques in statistics like hypothesis testing or, or any, any probability in statistics technique. So the first one is covering data visualization and your ability to come to interesting conclusions from it. The second, the second portfolio project is showing that you have good understanding of statistical techniques and you can apply it to a real world problem to come up to, to actually perform good analysis and come to good conclusions. Third blog that you that you should consider doing is to use basic machine learning techniques that I've listed, perform feature importance and come to good conclusions and build simple models. Even for this, you can write a very simple blog and code if you can build a web app, that's always, that's always better, right? So these are some of the steps that you should keep in mind when you're preparing for data analyst roles and even when you're interviewing for data analyst roles.